temporary restrictions on new permits for cryptocurrency mining operations at fossil fuel plants expire this fall as state policymakers find themselves at a crossroads with New York's ongoing effort to embrace green energy and reduce carbon emissions here in the Empire State. To discuss the end of this moratorium and the larger environmental concerns about using fossil fuels to power so-called proof-of-work mining for digital currency, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Liz Moran, policy advocate with Earth Justice. Thanks for making the time again, Liz. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we're also hearing from Deb Gondek, chair of the North Tonawanda Climate Smart Communities Task Force. Welcome to the show, Deb. Thank you, David. Appreciate your interest in this topic. So, Liz, for starters, why are some environmental groups so concerned about using fossil fuels uh, to power cryptocurrency mining operations? For some context, cryptocurrency mining is a very energy intensive process that's utilized to validate cryptocurrencies. I think for a lot of people, cryptocurrency is sort of this abstract thing that exists on the web, but for it to be validated and have its worth, there are different ways to validate it. And currently, one of the most popular ways to do so, because it's what Bitcoin uses, is proof of work cryptocurrency mining. And it requires the use of these mega computers known as ASICs that end up working 24-7, 365 days a year to compete amongst one another, solving complex algorithms to ultimately win the cryptocurrency. And with crypto being worth a lot of money right now, there's a lot of these operations coming online. So in New York, we have this really important landmark climate law. And to make sure we're gonna meet those climate goals, fossil fuels really don't fit in the mix. And right now, We have crypto mining operations that are existing in these old fossil fuel power plants, bringing them back online, just at a time when it's especially urgent to move away from fossil fuel power entirely. We had Deb, uh, Liz mentions the impact that these operations could have on our broader efforts to realize the goals of the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act as it comes to, say, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. But what does this actually mean for, say, communities that uh, live near one of these fossil fuel plants that are being utilized for crypto mining or are being considered for crypto mining in the future? Well, I can share what it's been like for the past three years in North Tonawana, New York. Uh, We're situated halfway between Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And uh, during that time, it's become apparent that cryptocurrency mining operations have significant impacts on our local community. That includes wasteful energy consumption, high levels of noise pollution, environmental concerns, and infrastructure strains. So hundreds of residents living within a mile of the DigiHost Bitcoin mining facility can hear the constant loud noise from fans that are being used to cool about 4,000 computers housed outdoors in stacked shipping containers. And people can hear this in their homes even with their windows closed. And it's just disrupting sleep, disturbing pets. It's creating anxiety about property values as well as long-term health impacts of constant exposure to these types of high noise levels. So Liz, As Deb points out, there are ongoing digital mining efforts in New York right now. But what we're talking about is a moratorium on new permitting. Can you walk us back through what the legislature and governor authorized uh, two years ago and what was supposed to happen in the ensuing two years? In the face of the Four Star plant and Greenwich these crypto mining facilities that situate themselves in former fossil fuel power plants. It was a big wake up call where it was like, what are we going to do about this industry potentially situating itself in gas plants? We really need to take a pause and review the impacts of cryptocurrency mining. So as a result, the legislature and then the governor signed into law a two-year moratorium on the issuance of new air permits for cryptocurrency mining in fossil fuel facilities. And at the same time, the legislation and law directed the Department of Environmental Conservation to conduct an environmental impact statement. Your listeners might be familiar with a really big one in New York that was similar uh, on 
high volume hydraulic fracturing or fracking. So this was going to be really important, both of these things to be occurring, to make sure we pause any potential new gas plants coming online for these purposes while the state conducts an environmental review. But unfortunately, we're about to hit the end of this moratorium later this month, and we don't have the environmental review yet. And this is really concerning because not only are communities suffering from these plants right now, as Deb mentioned, but we also have our first big climate target to meet under the climate law. And cryptocurrency mining is playing a big part in preventing the state from potentially meeting those mandates. Well, Liz, in 2021, voters approved additional language to the state constitution guaranteeing a uh, right to clean air, clean water, and a healthful environment. So given that backdrop, why do we need a prohibition on the permitting if we're concerned uh, about them moving forward? Why not uh, allow permitting, but uh, under the watchful eye of this constitutional amendment, if there are environmental concerns, wouldn't that lead to the permits ultimately being denied? Well, we actually have a permit that was denied for Greenwich. DEC denied the Greenwich air permit renewal under the grounds of our climate law, which we think is spot on. There is no way that Greenwich's operations are in alignment with our climate law requirements. So DEC did the right thing here, and that's currently going through the legal process. Um, so we do feel that under the climate law, op operations like these in fossil fuel power plants simply don't make sense when it comes to our climate law, especially when you consider cryptocurrency does not have to exist based on cryptocurrency mining. There are other means of validating cryptocurrency that don't consume as much energy, that are not going to have the noise and water impacts that proof of work crypto mining have. Uh, Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency, uses another methodology known as proof of stake. So this is not a crypto versus the environment moment. This is making sure that New York State can meet our climate law mandates and protect communities much like Debs. Right, but why do we need a ban on these permits if there's already, as you mentioned, the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, as well as the state constitutional language that I mentioned, which make it difficult, if not impossible, to green light a permit? Yeah, well, I think to be clear, we don't have a prohibition on permits. We have a moratorium. And the idea that was really to make sure that there was a pause on this, a guaranteed pause to protect communities while the state conducts a more comprehensive environmental review. And we're about to hit the expiration of that moratorium, but we don't have our environmental review yet. So that does put communities in jeopardy. The idea here was really to make sure that we're preventing communities from exposure to air pollution, noise impacts, water impacts, and more, while we really take a look at this practice to make sure that we can regulate it in alignment with our climate law and more. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have that environmental review yet. So it's really urgent that Governor Hochul and the Department of Environmental Conservation get a move on because our climate law is at stake and communities' well-being is at stake. The cryptocurrency mining, specifically Bitcoin mining with their wasteful energy proof of work method of verifying transactions, is part of the reason our state is so far behind on the CLCPA targets. So we don't even know the full scope because we lack formal data gathering process for emissions and central reporting structure. Let me just try to put in perspective what's happening in one small community, North Tonawana, New York, related to emissions. In just the first few months of this year, Digihose emissions surpassed the total emissions of 2022 and 2023 combined, now that they're fully up and running. So when this former Ford Star Peaker plant was sold to Digihost, it went from providing power to the public grid only when necessary to becoming a major source of local air pollution and contributor to climate change. So this is just one example of what's happening in communities across New York State. And this is why we need the state to deliver a comprehensive environmental impact study of crypto mining operations.
Well, Deb, the concerns you raised earlier about the cryptocurrency mining operations in your community are similar to what we hear sometimes about other projects that people don't necessarily want in their backyard, whether it's because of noise pollution or other disruption to everyday life. And this could even include some environmentally friendly projects. So is your concern primarily on the environmental front and the carbon footprint of the crypto mining operation? Or is this more of a NIMBY concern? There are so many issues, and I'm concerned with all of them. You mentioned the noise piece of it. So um, that's one of the continued issues with unregulated Bitcoin mining. So there is our, our challenge here in North Tonawanda and other communities is a lack of enforcement of local noise control ordinances. So Decades ago, the EPA pushed enforcement of noise uh, control down to the municipalities. And in most cases, these cities don't have proper noise monitoring equipment, the manpower or the training to formally document noise levels. And even though many residents in North Tonawanda have recorded readings that exceed our city's ordinance, our city attorney has advised this won't hold up in court. During the process of all this, we also found out that our noise control ordinance is outdated and it doesn't reflect the decibel readings we now know are needed to capture the low frequency industrial noise generated by these Bitcoin mining facilities. So you can see where there are gaps in enforcement for ordinances and codes that are already on the books. Um, Water use and infrastructure is another concern of ours. For Digihost, their estimated water use is 500,000 gallons of water each day. And then their Bitcoin mining operation pumps 200,000 gallons of superheated wastewater through our city's aging infrastructure each day. So those are just a couple examples of the concerns we have with this high energy Bitcoin mining facility. Liz, anything you want to see on this front from state policymakers in 2025, or is it primarily just about administrative action from the State Department of Environmental Conservation? Yeah, I mean, we really do need the environmental impact study. It's really important that this is completed because one is required by law. We need to make sure that we understand the full scope of the issue, as Deb was pointing out, and using that EIS, that Governor Hochul and the legislature take appropriate actions afterwards. We're going to be interested in legislative solutions, but we need to know the full scope of the issue. In the meantime, without this environmental impact study and with the expiration of the moratorium coming up, we still have operations like Greenwich and Digihost, and those operations are operating without valid air permits, continuing to cause harm to their surrounding communities. They've suffered enough, and we don't want to see more communities suffer similarly, especially with our climate law. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this conversation. We've been hearing from Liz Moran, a policy advocate with Earth Justice. Thanks, as always, Liz. Yeah, thanks. Great chatting with you about this. We've also been hearing from Deb Gondek, chair of the North Tonawanda Climate Smart Communities Task Force. Thanks for making the time, Deb. We appreciate it. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.